Hello everyone and welcome to an episode of Physics Rocks. It's true, you will notice that we are not live. Um, that is for reasons that will become clear later on. All right, let's get to work. What we want to do is we want to talk about electrical safety and how fuses and earth wires protect the user. Right, so first things first, we've got to understand how electricity works in your house. So let's get ourselves a little house going on. Um, so there's a little house. Okay, and let's put an object in it. So let's put in um, a fridge. So here's a fridge. Now in order for your fridge to work, electricity needs to come from some form of power supply. So let's pretend that's a battery for now. Okay, and electricity must form a complete circuit with your fridge. So a wire comes in, and a wire comes out, forming a complete loop. Now, that's not entirely unlike what it really is like, um, but let's do a little bit better here. Instead of having a battery stuck into your wall, what you have is um, two pins and a plug. And for those of you who are watching from um, Europe or America, that's perfectly normal. For those of us in the UK uh, and in Ireland, it's a little bit different that we have three pins, but there's at least two required. One of them is called the live pin and the other one is called the neutral pin. Okay, the live wire um, has a tendency to be brown. Okay, it comes out, travels into your machine, goes round all the electrics, does whatever it needs to, and then coming out, we have a neutral wire, which is nice and blue. And it does exactly the same thing, it just forms a complete circuit. Um, and that's great. Okay, your live wire has about 240 volts going in, so it's your, it's your kind of big voltage side of your battery. And then on the way out, pardon me for that, and on the way out, you have a zero volt neutral. Okay, so the 240 volts gets dropped off, as it were, inside your fridge. And that's absolutely fine and dandy. That'll work and it's not an issue. But what the fuse and the live wire do is they're here in case something goes wrong. So let's take a look at our um, let's take a look at our appliance. So let's pick ourselves any regular appliance, but the key thing here is that this appliance is going to have some form of metallic outer casing. Okay, so we'll give it a little bit of a tinge inside and we'll give it a, a little metal outline. Okay, now my live wire, as I said before, comes in from the plug on the wall, so we'll call that there, and it's a little brown lead. So let's get ourselves a little brown colour. There it is in our recent colours. And it comes in. And it goes into the whatever the electrical workings are. So let's imagine that this is like, I don't know, let's let's imagine it's a it's a washing machine or something like that. Okay, so pop that there. Okay. Now normally it'd go in and do its washing machine stuff. Uh, go round, be nice and safe. Then out from here comes our neutral wire, loops around, and we've got a nice complete circuit. Just like that. Okay, and this is perfect. If it works like this, we're, we're happy. This is a complete circuit, not a problem. The problem arises that because these things are moving over time, this is spinning around and bouncing up and down and doing all sorts of things, going bouncy, bouncy, bouncy like that, that on occasion, what might happen is that our live wire here might become loose and drop and touch the outside of our metal case. Okay, so problem one is that this stops spinny, spinny, spinny happening because we no longer have a complete circuit. So the electricity is not getting to the working parts here. And the first thing you'll notice is that your washing machine stops working. Okay, it stopped randomly in the middle of the cycle. All the lights go off. This is bad news. What's worse news is, remember that this is the 240 volt side of things. Okay, and that's still true. And electricity will travel from areas of high voltage or high potential, as it's sometimes known, we'll call this high voltage over here. And it wants to travel to areas of low voltage, which is normally our neutral wire bit, but it can't get to that because it's no longer connected. Other things that have low voltage include the ground. It has low voltage. But because most of these things are up on insulating pads, um, then electricity doesn't travel straight into the ground, it can't. So it just kind of sits there waiting with its high potential or its high voltage until some unbeknown young person comes along, or old person, we're not age discriminatory here, comes along and touches the outer casing. Now herein lies the big problem because you're quite a good conductor. And now you've got a path from 240 volts that runs all the way around the metal edge of this through this very good fleshy meat bag 
of conductive goodness down through here and into the ground and that is electrocution. Right, you've got electricity travelling through here, you've got current travelling along this path into the ground and it will keep seeping and seeping and seeping, it will keep drawing electricity until you're a burnt crisp. Okay, until you finally uh, go on fire or burn or melt or whatever it is and you'll be dead. And this is not the ideal situation if you're trying to sell washing machines, so we need to do something about this. Right, so what can we do about this? Think this is a this is a this is a very specific problem, but it's not as uncommon as you would think. Okay, so object objective one is we could do some form of sacrificial protection, right? So um, you know, get the get the get the family animal. Okay, exceptional art skills on display here as always on the channel. Okay, let's give this thing some legs. I'm not sure what this is, but let's let's call it an animal. Group that together and uh, give it a colour. There we go. Looks like an animal, right? Send your animal across. You know, train it somehow. Throw a ball towards it. Make sure it touches against this. And if it just rubs up and down, everything's fine. If it walks away, and if it ends up becoming a black and charred crisp, uh, then there's probably something wrong with your washing machine. You'll want to get that fixed. That's a bit of a problem because people get quite attached to their pets. We want a non-upsetting sacrificial protection system uh, that conducts electricity. The good thing is nobody seems to care about wires. So what we do is we get ourselves a good, nice, thick wire, um, make it out of copper and everything, and all we do is connect it from the case and into the ground. And this we call the earth wire. Now in the extremely unlikely event, that, well not extremely unlikely, in the unlikely event that this does happen, current will now travel through here, let's get a better colour for that, uh, let's get red. Current will travel through here, along through your metal case, in through this and into the ground. Which is brilliant. Okay, this is saving us, um, except when we, come and when we come and touch this again, we have formed a bit of a parallel circuit and death is going to happen again. Um, worse, because this has pretty much no resistance, like this is a good quality um, this is a good quality metal, followed by good quality metal, followed by good quality metal. We have no resistance. That means we're going to have a huge current. Um, that's going to generate heat and we're probably going to set our house on fire long before anything else happens. So this is bad. Okay, But we do have high current travelling and this means heat. And this would not be good. Okay, This is sad face on that one. But we can use this. We can use this. Okay, what we're going to do is up here on our live wire, somewhere near the start of it, if we can possibly, is we're going to put a slightly thinner piece of wire. Okay, so let's get ourselves a little thin bit of wire and pop that in along here. Just a tiny little thin bit. I'm going to stick it in there um, and we're going to shorten this out. So shorten that down. I'll put that up here. Okay, and I mean so thin that we're going to have to encase it in some form of glass canister so that it doesn't just get knocked into and, and wrecked. Okay, so, um, right. So now what we want to do is we've got huge current travelling through here, remember, as before. But this time, this time, when the big current goes through here, the heat becomes so high quickly in this little bit of metal that this little bit of metal melts. And when it does that, there's a gap in the circuit. Okay, so we don't get any current flowing. And that's a fuse. A fuse is this little thin bit of metal that when too much current flows, it heats up and melts. Alright, so let's go let's get ourselves clear what's going on here. Step one, that your live wire becomes loose and touches the metal case. Okay? Two, a, the earth wire provides a low resistance path to the ground. And we remind ourselves that that's zero volts. Three, a large current flows. Let's make ourselves some space. We've got a couple more bits to go here. Four. The large current 
creates heat, which melts the fuse. Five, this breaks the circuit and prevents electrocution. Now just to be clear everybody, this is still broken, this still needs fixing, it's just not deadly anymore. So if you go and replace the fuse, exactly the same thing is going to happen again, it's going to blow again. So you're going to need to take this away and get it fixed by um, a qualified repair person or you're going to have to open it up and have a look and figure out what to do here if you know a little bit about electrics. Uh, there are five points there, usually seen in a six mark question. Um, and the sixth mark is usually for quality of written communication. All right, now folks, what I want to do is I want to take a look at the worksheet that goes with this this evening. This is why we're not live, because what I want you to do is I want you to pause this video now. I want you to go to the link in the description below and download the worksheet. Have a crack at it and then hit unpause as soon as you're finished here and we're going to go through the answers because I'm starting to realize that people get the worksheets but they don't know what to do with them. So let's get that sorted out. All right, so I'll see you in just one second when you've got that sorted out. Okay, everybody, so let's get to it. There are four questions on the worksheet. Let's get it done. Okay, so which two wires are required for a working circuit? Okay, so for our working circuit, it doesn't have to be safe, it doesn't have to be anything else, but just to make it work, we need a live wire and a neutral wire. Okay, well done for those of you who went for the extra credit and went for the live wire in brackets brown and the neutral wire perhaps in brackets blue. Okay, two. What specific fault is the earth wire there to protect against? Okay, it's there to protect against if the live wire, that's your first mark, becomes loose and touches the metal casing for your second mark. So a mark there as well. Okay. Number three, what is a fuse and how does it blow? Okay, a fuse is a thin piece of wire, that's one, and how does it blow? Too much current creates heat which melts it. Alright, so your thin piece of wire gets melted by too much heat caused by the current. And then this is the big one. This is the describe in detail how an earth wire and fuse protect the user of an appliance with a metal outer casing. Six mark question. This is your essay question. Let's get to it. Indicative content. First thing we're looking for is that the live wire touches the metal casing. Okay. Second part we're looking for is that the earth wire provides a low resistance path to earth or ground or zero volts if you want. Okay. Once we've got that, that means a large current flows because of the fact that we've got low resistance. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, go and check out some of my live stream stuff on um, current and voltage and Ohm's law. So large current flows. This large current creates heat, which melts the fuse. This breaks the circuit. And therefore this prevents electrocution. And there's your six marks. Any five of those will get it to you, plus one for quality of written communication. All right, everybody, I hope this has made sense. I'm not sure as to whether or not this has been useful, but um, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below, do we like this method that has the little worksheet at the end, or do we prefer the live stuff where we can interact and chat? I don't mind either way, um, just whatever helps you most. So please, please, please let me know. Um, leave a like, uh, hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and don't forget everybody, physics rocks. It's true.